Today I'm going to share with you this photo that I took at St. Augustine Beach in Florida. This is a long exposure, four minute long photo that I made on a drizzly overcast day. Today I'll share with you some of the gear I used to capture this long exposure, the process I followed, and then finally the editing session in Lightroom. Hi, I'm Tom Sloan. I'm a landscape and portrait photographer. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you how I made this long exposure photo. And if you find this video useful, hit the like and subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And any comments, feel free to leave them below. I'd love to hear from you and get some feedback. So the day that I captured this, I saw the forecast was going to be overcast and drizzly. So Usually I like to see, as most of us do, at sunrise, these beautiful, vibrant colors. That wasn't going to happen. So during times like this, where you don't have ideal conditions, I often go to uh, shooting long exposure. I find that these kind of overcast conditions create this dreamy, ethereal feel that captures the scene uh, in a very creative way. So let's start with the gear. Uh, first of all, the camera I used to capture this image was a Sony A7R III. Uh, that's the camera that's actually filming this video right now, so I can't show you that. But uh, let's start with the lens. The lens that I shot this with is a Voigtlander uh, manual focus lens. It's a Leica M mount lens and I have an adapter on here from Hawks Factory that allows this lens to work with the F mount uh, on the Sony camera. It's manual focus so I don't get any of the data around f-stop uh, in uh, fed back to the to the camera but this is this is my go-to uh, landscape lens. And it's a nice 15 millimeter wide angle lens. It produces sharp images uh, and, and I love it. So the second key element is an ND filter. In my case, with this photo, I used an eight stop ND filter. And this is an ND filter from Hoya. It's a 58 millimeter thread that just screws on to the front of my Voigtlander. So I use this for all of my long exposure photos. The other element that is key to long exposure, and this may be obvious, but tripod. Something to stabilize your camera while it's open for as long as you need to capture that image. In this case, this was a four minute exposure, and this was the uh, tripod that I used. It's a Manfrotto, and it's uh, quite good. I, I really like it. Uh, the other element that I used in this uh, to capture this photo, and this is optional. You don't need one of these, but I like having one of these with me. This is a Velo uh, Shutter Boss 2. This is a velometer that allows you to uh, trigger your camera uh, from the velometer so that you're not touching the camera. Uh, you just uh, plug it into the side. And it also helps you control how long the shutter is open. And there's a whole bunch of other things you can do with it. You, you can do time lapse, um, interval shots, uh, etc. But I use this to set the time. So the shot that I made, that photo, I shot at F11, ISO 100, and 4 minutes 13 seconds. So the next part of this is the process. How do I capture long exposure? I'm not going to go into detail about that, but I'm going to refer you to Gordon Lang's video uh, that talks about long exposure tips and techniques. I'll go in briefly, but his video really goes into depth. So I, I encourage you to uh, explore that. It will be, uh, I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, but at a high level, here's what I do. I set up my composition and I set my f-stop. 
uh, and my ISO. So F11, ISO 100. I then put my camera into aperture priority and I get the reading of what the shutter speed is that the camera calculated. In this case, on this shot, the camera calculated the appropriate shutter speed to be one second. So then I needed to figure out what should be the shutter speed if I put this eight stop ND filter on. So the good thing about this is you don't have to do the math to figure that out. There are apps on the Apple Store, there are apps on the Google Play Store, and if you just search on ND filters, ND calculators, um, you'll find a number of apps that can do that for you. So I had an app on my phone, I plugged in one second, and I plugged in eight stop ND filter. And it magically <laughs> returned the appropriate time to set four minutes, 13 seconds. So I set my velometer to four minutes, 13 seconds, and then took the photo. So this is the image that we're gonna be uh, editing, the long exposure. This was approximately a six minute long exposure, 246 seconds. And first thing we wanna do here is uh, as you can see from this raw image, uh, it's pretty flat, but you'll see a lot of vignetting here, and that's because of the the uh, the lens, the Voigtlander lens. So I'm going to do start off with lens correction, and so we're going to remove chromatic aberrations and then enable profile corrections. And so as you can see right there, pretty quickly the vignetting has gone away and we've got uh, you know a, a much brighter image so let's start with the basics here so right now the exposure is a little high so I'm going to take that down a little bit maybe half a stop a little over half a stop I'm going to bring down the highlights mm. About 67. I'm going to open up these shadows. Around 70 looks pretty good right now. So you're seeing a little bit more detail here in the pier. And then I'm going to set the white point for this image. And we want to bring it up so that it just before it starts to clip. So I'm holding the Alt key down as I'm moving that to the right, and then I'm going to back it off. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now, uh, so we're not clipping any images, uh, any pixels here in the whites. So we're going to now we're going to do the same with the black. I'm going to hold down the Alt key, slide that to the left, and start to introduce some of the blacks in that. Here. So that looks pretty good so far. Maybe take that down a little bit more. I don't like this dark here, so I'm just going to bring the exposure up just a little bit. Maybe somewhere around there, about a third of a stop. So um, at this point, what I'm looking at is I see that the, the sky is a little bright, so I'm going to bring down the exposure. I'm going to introduce a linear gradient. I see I'm clipping some pixels here, so I'm going to slide the, the white a little bit until just back that off just a skosh. Uh, I'm going to bring down the sky with a linear gradient. So I'm going to drop the exposure. So I'm going to bring that down just below the horizon. And I'm going to bring it down 
Maybe about a third of a stop. And then what I'm, as I'm looking at this right now, I see this is a little bit too bright, so I'm going to add another linear gradient that kind of um, aligns with the shore here. So I'm going to drag that in from the corner. So I'm going to add another mask, create new mask, click on the linear gradient, and I'm going to pull this like, oops. Sorry about that. Pull that up like this. And now I'm going to bring the exposure down. I'm going to do it about a, another third of a stop. That's a little bit too much. I'm just going to put a negative 0.3 in there. And that's better. So, so I like that. The last thing I'm going to do, this is a long exposure. Uh, and so if I zoom in here, I'm going to see that there's a little bit of noise, quite a bit of noise when you do a long exposure. So I can see that. I'm just going to bump up, go into the details panel here, and I'm just going to move the noise reduction maybe up to about 30. Right? Just type that in. It's usually pretty good. So as I click in there, that's much better. I don't know if you can, you may not be able to see that on your monitor, but it looks better to me. And so the last thing here, as I'm, as I'm looking at this image, I want to add just a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to go into the tone curve and I'm just going to select the medium contrast here. So, uh, there you are. So let me show you the before and after. That is the before. And that is the after. So uh, I hope that was helpful. Uh, and I encourage you to experiment with the long exposures, especially if you have a day like I had where it was not the spectacular um, sunrise that I had hoped for, but uh, recognizing that it wasn't going to be a spectacular sunrise, uh, I just wanted to make the best of it and create these long exposures. I love long exposures anyway. Uh, I like the creamy water and you know the clouds, uh, the motion in the clouds. So this was a six minute exposure and I hope that that edit was helpful to you. It was a very simple edit. I didn't have to do a lot because the, you know, I got most of it right in, in camera uh, and then just took the raw image and uh, created this shot here. So if you find this video useful, hit the like and subscribe and I'd appreciate it if you leave any comments down below. Thanks for watching and hope to see you soon.